On this side with a 28 core CPU, 384 gigs of RAM, dual Radeon, seven GPUs, a liquid SSD, and custom water cooling, it's the fastest Mac on the planet, the Hack Pro! And on this side, also rocking 28 cores, 384 gigs of RAM, a Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo, and buttloads of Apple engineering, the 2019 Mac Pro! It's finally here. The head-to-head -head battle you guys have been waiting a <clears throat> year for. Can we build a better Mac than Apple? It's Hack versus Mac. Linus versus Tim, pineapple on pizza, let's go! The Phantom Wallet fans out your cards for easy access. It's available in three sizes and offers optional attachments to hold your cash and keys. Click the link below to learn more. Let's start with the elephant in the room. If our journey is anything to go on, people who want the Mac OS experience should just buy a damn Mac. Like, seriously guys. In fairness to our Hack Pro, most of the issues we ran into were nothing to do with just building a computer and getting Mac OS to run on it. The most recent month's long delay ended up being caused by a couple of capacitors that broke off the motherboard, possibly thanks to some questionable solder joints. But even so, it does nothing to address some of the real differences between Hackintosh and true Mac hardware. iMessage, for example, is still not working on our unit, even though some others have had success. And not only did we fail to get Mac OS to recognize our Thunderbolt 3 card, we couldn't even get it recognized in the BIOS on this motherboard, probably because Gigabyte, like other PC vendors, doesn't feel like dedicating any additional engineering resources to this fringe use case, especially on a fringe motherboard. Which is fair enough, I suppose, except it is advertised as a feature and this motherboard costs over a thousand US dollars. It's particularly painful because a lack of Thunderbolt prevents us from easily connecting Apple's Pro Display XDR with a single cable. Instead, we need a cable that adapts DisplayPort and USB to a single USB-C connection that supports display stream compression, not to mention that we lose a couple of USB ports. Anywho, there are other premium content creation monitors that use a regular DisplayPort connection. So the biggest downside to our setup then is that we're left to clumsily change color space settings through the monitor rather than doing it seamlessly through macOS. It is kind of a bummer. Enough about the disadvantages though. Now that it's working, we can finally do what we promised over a year ago. Utilize the overclocking capabilities of our DIY PC hardware to hopefully outperform Apple's own top of the line, giving us the crown for fastest Mac on the planet. Now because of the motherboard issues we're having, <clears throat> we're only probably gonna be able to do about 4.1 gigahertz, enable XMP, and we're not even gonna try to tweak any voltages. Well, we did, and it was bad. So, <laughs> it should still be faster though. Come on, come on, Hack Pro. Go Hack Pro. Oh boy, those fans sure ramped up. Now that is something that we could fine tune, but uh, we didn't. But hey, it's faster, which is what we promised. Actually, we also promised quieter. And it can be, now that the test is done. <laughs> so what are our scores here? We got 34,000 over here and a mere 26,000 over on that side. That's right, when it runs that fast, 10 seconds is a big difference. We crushed it. What about thermals though? Should have just not put industrial PPCs in. That would have been easier. Just put quiet fans in the first place. Whew, 400 watts package power. How you doing? 240. So it definitely comes at a power consumption cost. Not to mention <clears throat> acoustics since we didn't get the fan curve uh, tuned. I mean, our temps are uh, downright chilly considering we're drawing 150 more watts though. So that's pretty cool. Not bad, Hack Pro. Not bad. 
After 10 minutes, it was still running at 4.1 gigahertz and managed to be 24% faster than our Mac Pro while also running about 10 degrees cooler. Though to the Mac Pro's credit, it was significantly quieter even at the end of the test. For our next trick, we're gonna fire up a classic Apple benchmark, Geekbench 5, starting in CPU mode. Wanna, wanna feel geeky too? Go to lttstore.com, get a, get a CPU pillow. 40% alpaca wool. It's true. And we've got our results. Our multi-core score predictably is significantly higher on our Hack Pro, but if you look closely, our single core score is actually a little lower. And I'll explain why that is. On a modern CPU, which is designed to boost from its base clock speed, the lighter the load, the more it can boost if it's just boosting one or two cores at a time. So by overclocking the CPU in a more traditional manner, just setting all of the cores to a high-ish clock speed, we actually hurt this CPU's ability to boost up an individual core in a lightly threaded workload like this. Not that much, mind you, but it's there. If we overclocked it more, well, yeah, that would help, but we're not gonna do that because it's being really flaky. <laughs> Our GPU or compute run here is gonna be an interesting one because there is no off-the-shelf equivalent to the Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo that the Mac Pro uses. It's two GPUs on a single card, but as far as we can tell, Geekbench only utilizes one of those engines at a time. By contrast, we're running Radeon 7s, which at the time were the fastest cards that AMD had on the market in our Hack Pro, and we can only use one of those at a time. But looking at the scores, we're not quite sure if that makes sense. It actually kind of seems like this one is utilizing both of them. So we're gonna have to run a different benchmark to see how an apples to apples, <laughs> where both machines are using both GPUs result plays out. Blackmagic raw speed test, by contrast, evaluates only one aspect of system performance, but uses the entire grunt of the system, showing us that our Hack Pro is faster here, which means that the performance disparity we saw before has got to come down to optimizations that Apple and AMD have made to the Pro drivers that are just not available on regular Radeon non-Pro drivers. It's kind of like what you'd see with NVIDIA with a GeForce versus a Quadro card. Novabench is a full system benchmark, but from what we've heard, it leans a little bit more heavily on single thread performance versus multi-thread performance, which ended up giving our Mac Pro the edge over the Hack Pro, although not by a ton. Overall then, the two machines traded blows across our entire test suite, depending on what type of performance the application required. We wanted to make a music production benchmark, but unfortunately we didn't have time, though make sure you're subscribed because we are working on something for you music producers. The last thing that's really left to talk about is IO and expandability. It's straight up better on the Mac Pro. This is one of the things that we really talked about a lot in our review of the 2019 Mac Pro. Apple did something that I never expected them to do again. They made a totally upgradable, user serviceable, professional grade desktop machine. All that remains now is to see what happens to that paradigm when it moves to Apple Silicon, probably sometime in late 2021 or 2022. The conclusion then, don't do what we did. Just use more mainstream hardware or use a virtual machine or just buy a freaking Mac, the Mac mini, like 2020 Mac mini. It's looking pretty good. If you guys enjoyed this video though, check out the playlist for this build because it is one heck of a roller coaster. FreshBooks is easy to use accounting software designed specifically with you in mind, the small business owner. FreshBooks has everything you need to manage your books invoicing, expenses, time tracking, and more. And it's designed to be easy to use with built-in automation. So you spend less time invoicing, expensing, and tracking projects, and more time doing projects and growing your business. Whether you're a tradesperson, creative agency, or a YouTuber, you can choose a plan that's right for you. They have award-winning Toronto-based customer support if you need it, and you can try it out for free for 30 days today with no credit card required at freshbooks.com Linus. Thank God this is over. <laughs>